Expo 67 presentation by Jen Liu and Cherry Liu. Hey, Gabe, we're supposed to be at City Hall. We're gonna build it right here. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. And give wet suits to all the visitors? <laughs> no, on the water. Hey, come on, we're talking about building something the size of 64 city blocks. And there's no land left in Montreal. So, get serious. Listen! We'll build islands. How? Dig up Montreal? <laughs> <laughs> They're digging a subway, remember? You take it from there, and you put it here. World, uh, Montreal World Fair 1967, as known as the Expo 67, it's hold the world record on the one day um, admission of 15 million. Therefore, it can be argued being the most successful Expo of 20th century. Montreal's Expo 67, it would prove to be the most successful World's Fair of the 20th century. Expo 67 was first proposed by Senator Marc Druin of Quebec, former mayor of Montreal, for Canada's 100th birthday. The Bureau International des Exposition, or known as BIE, decided to hold the 1967 Expo in Moscow instead, but Russia cancelled last minute in 1962, so Montreal's mayor, which we see here, Jean Drape, Re -re represented the idea and was granted the project by November of that same year. The theme of the Expo 67, Man and His World, was derived from the book Tres de Homes, translated as Wind, Sand, and Stars, by author, poet, and aviator, Tony de saint Exbury. The logo that accompanied the themes of summarizing the expo was designed by Montreal artist Julie Hibbert. It consists of a circle chains of the ascent symbol of man, which represent men linked together worldwide friendship around the world. The theme, man and his world, was divided into the five subtitles. Um, allowing the different participants to choose the inter points. The category are man the creator, man the explorer, man the producer, man the provider, and man and the community. Man the Creator was an international exhibition portray portraying the story of man and his world in the form of records through the four disciplines painting that displays civilization and culture through time, sculpture that contrasts man-made forms against nature, photography as witness of the ever-changing world, and industrial design that better men's environment. Man the Explorer is the revealing of the curiosity of man in the scientific exploration of the body, the utter regions of the world, and the mysteries of the universe. One of the highlights of the expo was the development of multi-screen film, which was heavily used in this category. Man, the producer, is located in the middle of a lane natural domain. The impressed man of produced pavilion is one of the largest at Expo 167. In the first part of the parade, the visitor can learn about the human kind relationship with Earth's abundant natural resource. And the second part of a focus on the concepts of the programs. It introduced the recent technology advance and the principles their impact. For example, factory automations could lead to the upfield in products and the labor force. The third and the final part is called the man in control. Explore how humans use the technology in their development. And the Provider related to explore overview themes of rule of uh, agriculture to what man have to done and is doing toward the provide the food which is replay the expand world the population needed to expelation acquire the living standard for the whole milk and mankind as expression the 
tremendous challenge to men bring the about the balance between increased population and the food requirements by increased agricultural production. Men and the community included discourses on social science and humanities. One of the examples of this is the architecture Habitat 67 by Moshi Safdi, where 354 interconnected concrete boxes was constructed to demonstrate an alternative way of housing. I think the Expo 167 is a shift moment in World Fair history. Since 19th centuries, the first World Expo in Crystal Palace, World exhibitions were especially focused on the trade and were the famous for the display technology inventions and advancements. But at the 1967s, international and universal exhibitions in Montreal, it was man and his world. It's a very encouraging effect intercultural community for exchange of innovations. More and more people are thinking what are we uh, as a human can and what is the relation between people and the environmentals. At Expo 67, people sought things and, and their own identity, more universal and sought more broad area, broken the boundary between the cultures and working together represent the human. The historic framework around the origin of these world fair, fairs and international exposition is heavily based on colonialistic ideals, resulting to the no, in the notions of superiority and domination. In Expo 67, there was an acknowledgement to such past, such as the works by Papa Ilbra Tal, which we see here, in favor of ideological progress. But with such a heroic theme of man and his world, how much progress have been made from the man that thought to see is to know? Who is included in this man that inspires such pride and confidence? Therefore, one has to ask, who is neglected? Spectacular fountains, curving, sweeping towers and minarets, majestic waterfalls combine in a feast for the eye. For sightseers, there are plenty of sights to see. The universal exhibits symbolize more than just beautiful buildings. They constitute the most modern advances in art, science, and culture. The amusement area has everything to help the visitor relax, have fun, and enjoy himself. Traditional rewards of any fair. The U.S. Pavilion has a built-in mini rail train, a meeting place of peoples, promoting mutual respect and understanding. Expo 67.